right, now we're going to do a little bit with uh, drawing and users input kind of stuff. We've obviously done a lot with events. We've done a lot with user interactions. But sometimes you want users to be able specifically to draw on your map, make shapes, make some kind of stuff. Maybe you want to save those shapes. Um, you know, there's a lot of different possible use cases for that. Um, I personally, when I go running or cycling, I like to go to a website that is like, I think it's how far did I run com or something like that. And basically I can draw a polyline along where I went and, you know, it kind of tracks the route to make sure it, it fits the streets. Or I can manually turn it off. You know, there's different kinds of options that it gives to me when I'm drawing a polyline. <coughs> Similarly, if I make a map in, say, like, you know, some WordPress post I'm doing and I want to point out a few locations, I might want to add markers to the map and then have it save those markers so that when I come back it's, um, you know, the same. That's the whole point. So obviously we're not dealing anything with databases or like that complex kind of storage information here, but we are messing around with the user input side and how important it is that people are able to interact with your map easily if you're having them interact with you at all. So Leaflet has a lot of options. Of course, you could create your own kind of library. You can imagine, okay, if the user clicks a button and I turn on some kind of setting, and then when the user clicks the map, then I make a circle shape right where they clicked. And then whenever they move the mouse again, I make a polyline that is like between where they're currently mousing and that previous circle. And that would kind of be the beginning of a drawing kind of thing where you're like, click, okay, there's my point, click, click, click. So you can imagine we could actually make that ourselves. Um, but luckily for us, Leaflet has all kinds of awesome plugins, once again. So, um, okay, and obviously you can see Leaflet Draw pops up right away. We're going to look at Leaflet Draw, of course, but there's actually quite a lot of libraries. Why don't we just go to Leaflet Draw? So when it comes to editing geometries, which is essentially what we're doing, allowing users to create, draw, edit, and or delete points and various other shapes. Um, <clears throat> different libraries do this in different ways. Sometimes it's mainly uh, just a matter of interface, whereas other times there is some kind of functionality that they focus on. For instance, you can see that Leaflet Draw is kind of a general one. They also recommend it. It's very commonly used. It's been around for quite a long time. Uh, its interface is fairly familiar if you do some kind of mapping and stuff. Let's look at what it looks like. <clears throat> Use an example. Well, can we actually see an example here? Uh, there's the full demo. Okay, so you can see here it's fairly clear on the left-hand side exactly what you're supposed to do. Click there to put a marker. There's another marker. No. Okay, so every time they click it, and it's a little bit of information there, click map to place marker, to draw a circle. Okay, all pretty basic. Obviously, you're going to have to do various things with that if you want to, you know, make them editable after. It's also a nice edit function built into a lot of these where they'll make points and your users can add more points and modify things. This is very similar to geojson.io. Maybe you had a couple other drawing libraries just for the sake of, uh, you know, having a little bit of diversity here. So any of these libraries here should be, uh, you know, fairly good for you. Newer one that is kind of built for uh, later versions, latest versions of Leaflet and maybe uh, some more. As you can see, there's a little bit more on this base map. And it functions a little differently. There's not the user hint. You also have to click off, which is not immediately apparent. You can delete points, and again, you can edit them. Turn that off, and then we can't. Same kind of thing. Click, oh, slightly different functionalities, as you see. So it can be up to you, of course, which you prefer. But why don't we look at a little bit about how to actually use these. Um, so I would encourage you to search around, you know, if, the, if yours doesn't quite fit what you like, well, look around. So let's go look at some of what they recommend to do here. So if we want to add this, we just need to add a draw control. It looks like that's what's created if we include this library. And we can also pass it a whole bunch of um, items that have already been created. So if I had a bunch of polygons and stuff in my feature group, then I could pass it into Leaflet Draw and they would immediately become editable and available to Leaflet Draw. 
So that's kind of cool. For instance, if you're loading in a bunch of points on a map, but you want the user to adjust them um, the way that they prefer, instead of having them to draw the whole thing by themselves, this would be really useful. There's also a lot of, as you can imagine, events. But for me, the most common event that I run into wanting to capture <coughs> is when the user is done drawing something, you often want to get their shape. So you can see here on draw edited, we get a certain thing happen. And we have draw created, draw edited, deleted, draw start. There's all kinds of different ways to get out the information you want. Um, now you can do this in leaflet draw. I find leaflet draw is a little annoying to have to install locally, just there's a whole bunch of different shapes and stuff. <coughs> they don't make it too easy on you, so I'm going to go to our new one. and just Let's just install this and quickly get something up and running to see how it all works. So, Alright, I guess I should include the CSS up above. Okay, so we have some uh, leaflet uh, PM draw there. We'll see if we can kind of get this working on us. Okay. Include leaf okay, we're not doing an include statement. We're just going right on to it. So let's try what their example is here. See how this works. Okay. Let's load her up. Looks like it loaded right away. Nice and easy. Oh, that's pretty good. It's always nice when a library just loads in right as you could have hoped. All right, and we can see there's, you know, different types of options to enable and disable different type. So as we're looking for some options, we'll just look for uh, PM create. This seems about right. That's a very common one that you're going to want. When they actually make the layer, I want to see what we get as information, because then if we know that, we can do anything with it. So when I've made a marker, what did it just give us? An object with the current layer, that's great. So that's a leaflet layer and a leaflet marker. It gives us both of them, it's kind of nice. And it tells you what shape we had. It also tells you the target if you want to go down and get more of the options that way. It's basically very similar to the layer and the marker. So it's really easy to work with, easy to mess around. So you could easily have that automatically disable this different marker if you want it, or all kinds of things. So I just wanted to go through real quick and just actually install one of these drawing libraries and show you a couple different ones and just have you imagine what you can do. So, see you in the next video.